Hi, today we've got a new diagnostic tool to take a look at. This one is the Xtool XT80W, a professional automotive diagnostic system that comes with this large tablet device which can connect to your OBD2 port for diagnostics on your vehicles. And then also in this nice hard carry case, we've got a whole bunch of accessories. So let's take a closer look. The main tablet device has a nice 8 inch screen in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. We'll just turn it on so you can see how long it takes to boot up. But this one has a resolution of 1024 by 768 but this kind of aspect ratio works really well for card diagnostic tools because it fits things like graphs better on the screen. It's running Android 10 and it's got 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of ROM which is enough for all of the diagnostics that this tool is capable of. So this works with over 100 brands and more than 10,000 cars and that limitation on the memory is not any issue for all of the vehicles that it needs to be able to diagnose. So this tool has an integral 5 amp hour battery built in. It's charged through the USB-C port on the top and this port is only for charging and a couple of accessories that you can get which are hardwired to the unit. Other than that it does of course have all of the wireless communication so Wi-Fi and Bluetooth that allows it to work with some of the other tools and also obviously to connect to the internet so that it can download the updates. On the back of the unit there is a camera and a flash as well as a tilting bail so if you're using this on a workbench you can quite happily sit it there and be able to probe away on the screen and have a look at all of the parameters for the vehicle that you're looking at. Uh, the battery being 5 amp hours, that does actually pretty much last all day, so if you're doing some heavy diagnostics you shouldn't really need to plug it in at any point during the day. So as you can see, the screen is actually a really nice format, we've got all of the diagnostics easily available on here. We'll take a look at this in a little bit more detail shortly, let's have a look at the other accessories that came in the box. First of all, we've got a 20 watt USB-C power adapter. Uh, this actually looks like a fairly high quality device and it does have all of the relevant markings on there. Uh, but of course you can use any USB-C charger to charge the tablet. It also comes with a nice USB-C cable. This is USB 3 compatible and it looks to be a really high quality cable. It does also come with a USB 3 rated C to A adapter. So if your PC, for example, doesn't have a USB-C port, you can use this to transfer files on and off the device. Then, of course, we've got the VCI device itself. So this is what plugs into the diagnostic port and wirelessly communicates with the tablet. So you don't have to be connected with a cable to the OBD2 port, which is really handy if you want to walk around the vehicle and use some of the actuation settings to do things around the car. Then we've got a um, an adapter here. Now this is kind of an odd contraption. This one is from, for some of the key programming accessories and it's a means of powering up the VCI adapter so that everything can communicate wirelessly. Uh, but you only need this if you're using the KC501 key programmer because this device will, in conjunction with that accessory, program keys and allow you to uh, replace the key if yours has become damaged. And then finally the other part inside the box which is quite a nice included accessory is an endoscope type device. The tablet itself seems to be pretty responsive. We'll look at the diagnostics in a moment and we'll just have a quick look at the special functions that are available. So these are all of the special functions that this tool does which set it apart from the standard sort of general OBD2 type readers. So it allows you to do a whole bunch of things like uh, forced regeneration of the DPF system. Let's you look at the details of the HV battery if you've got a electric car or a hybrid vehicle uh, and then various things like injector coding, seat calibration and you can see the list here there's a whole bunch of things in here so a lot of relearning functions which are necessary uh, depending on the vehicle and the type of work that you're trying to do. In terms of updates we can see uh, there's nine pending here already uh, we can click update all and it does seem to download these pretty quickly. Uh, this tool does come with three years of free updates and then after three years you can continue to use the tool but with the version of the software that you last downloaded. So if you miss that last update just before your subscription runs out uh, then you won't be able to update it after that point unless you pay for a subscription once again. Right so we're going to plug in the dongle into the OBD2 port which is just down here in this vehicle and we get a green light when it comes on and this should change to blue when it connects to the tablet. And there we go. And on the tablet just at the top there the VCI logo has got the little green symbol next to it to say it's connected. 
So we're gonna to go to diagnostic on here. Let's just use the screen recorder here so you can see the screen a little bit better. Okay, so we'll click on diagnostic and we're in a Ford, so we'll click on Ford EU. It will then communicate with the little dongle and make sure that we are communicating with the right car. So you'll see the details flash up in a moment of what car it's connected to. Press OK on that. And then we can do automatic scan and this will go through and scan all of the modules in the vehicle. And as you can see, one of the nice features about this particular scan tool is it does a topology view rather than just listing out the various modules. So you can see which modules share the same bus um, all the way to the OBD2 port. And this particular device does communicate with all of the various buses that are on the car rather than just the PCM uh, CAN bus, the high-speed CAN bus. It can communicate with all of the various modules in the car. So you can see it going through and checking all of the modules that are connected. Now I have done some service work recently uh, and I haven't scanned the car for code for a long long time. Um, possibly some of the faults on the PCM are to do with me unplugging things while I had to do the service work but let's have a look once it's finished. There is a key at the top left as well so you can see what the different colours mean on the topology view and it's finished scanning. So we can click on DTC list and this will list out all of the faults and so oh, okay so one of the faults is the intake air temperature sensor circuit. Now I did some service work on this car recently. To change the um, air filter you do have to disconnect the mass airflow sensor and that has the air intake temperature sensor linked with it. Um, so we should be able to clear that code in a moment. We've got one for an intermittent oil level sensor circuit. Uh, I have seen that occasionally but it doesn't seem to cause any problems and then we've got four faults at the bottom which have always existed because we've got various LEDs installed in the vehicle. So from the topology view, you can actually click on any of the modules on here. So for example, the HVAC, we can click on that one at the bottom here. It says it's got no faults, but we can go into that module. And then for example, we can look at some live data that's going on in here. So we'll click on live data. And we've got all of the details about the HVAC system. So all of the various temperatures, um, you can see all of these here updating in real time. But I do want to have a look at um, the PCM faults and see if we can clear those. So we'll click on BCM, TCM, click Diagnose and then we're just going to clear these. These have been fixed. Codes have been erased and then if we read DTCs now none found. So that has worked quite nicely, very simple to clear the faults. Then we can click on live data and have a look at some of the live data coming from the PCM and we've got the various PIDs for the PCM and we can plot these on a graph if we want to. So we can click for example the load value and position of the accelerator pedal, click on custom and that puts them together and then we can go on to chart here and we can do it as a graph. So we've got those happening and if I blip the accelerator pedal you can see that updating very quickly in fact in real time that's probably the quickest that I've seen some of these updating so that's really good. And we can also record them if we want so we can actually log data over time. So that's kind of the live data view and then we've got some things like actuation test and special functions. So on this particular vehicle there's not many actuation tests and special functions. We should be able to force a DPF regeneration as well. So dry regeneration of the diesel particulate fil filter. If we were to click on that then this would force a DPF regeneration uh, and actually burn off all of the soot in the device. You can see now on the topology view the PCM and TCM is green because there's no further fault codes and that's sort of the automatic scan. Let's go back one level. Now on this vehicle a lot of the modules don't have many actuation tests but on much newer vehicles you'll find a whole bunch of these available for pretty much every module. The instrument panel cluster on this car seems to have them all available and you might see a screen more full like this for the particular vehicle and it might be things as simple as turning on you know, various indicators outside like one of the headlamp bulbs or one of the indicator lamps or it might be something more useful like triggering a certain solenoid on the engine or that kind of thing but you'd end up with a screen like this 
Uh, for example, we can click on one of these options, like we've got frost warning here, and if we click on actuation test and it says lamp is off, then we've got some options at the bottom of the screen. So we click on indicator lamp being green, and you can see at the bottom there, uh, we've got a frost indicator lamp. We can press red and it will turn to red, or we can press lamp is off. And then we can go to one of the other ones, for example, so traction control lamp, uh, we've got lamp on, slowly flashing, or rapidly flashing. And as you can see, this is quite a useful feature. In this case, it's only able to diagnose, for example, if a, a lamp wasn't working, but for other diagnostics, you'd be able to do some much more advanced diagnostics and try and work out exactly what's going on if your vehicle has a problem. In a future video, I think we'll have a look at some of the specific functions and we'll have a look at that endoscope camera as well. Uh, we will plug it into a hybrid car and have a look at the details that we can find out about the battery for that. Uh, but I'm going to leave it there for this particular video. I will put a link to this item in the description down below if you are interested in taking a look. But you've got an idea of how this system works and, you know, this screen with all of the functionality on here is really useful for car diagnostics. So I hope you found the video useful and until next time, thanks for watching.